What's up guys? This is the Roveman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War. Let's play as Great Britain. So to pick up where we left off, we have begun our attack against 13 colonies. So this force under Roland Nordell is going to attack and smash the force of Jonas Bridgman. And this is to the south and we've got a whole bunch of other fights to uh, clean up to the north. So let's do this. All the while, all while this is going on, I'm going to want to be uh, recruiting troops from um, Boston to make sure I, I keep plugging any gaps that may emerge from my line. Um, <laughs> um, but there shouldn't be too many. The, the 13 colonies has the ability to cause some issues, but I don't foresee a significant strategic challenge to us. And this is a bit of a funky deployment zone. So let's get my artillery up on the hill. So, so these are Northumberland Fusiliers. Yeah, they are very much Fusilier. Uh, defense 20 is pretty good. Charge is not great. They don't do much attack. But they are better in... Generally better in combat than my colonial line. Except for the charge bonus. So let's keep my militia out wide. Let's anchor them with some volunteers and some line infantry on the flank. Let's put two units of line here. And then let's put us some, emer uh, some mercenaries, fusiliers and my hessian grenadiers through the town. Pikes are going to lead the way. Cavalry or some dragoons are going to scout the right flank. One howitzer at the centre. Firing at will, general in the center. Okay, so let's get my howitzers focusing on their cavalry rather than their actual army. I foresee some hidden troops somewhere, so we can can't do anything except just advance. Actually, let's take. You guys in advance like so, unless they all actually all just are hidden over here. In which case, let's get my pikes running up. This infantry can walk. Let's change my howitzers. Target to be the 23rd Regiment of Foot Hessian Line. Just get one pike unit to attack the Hessian line, another unit to attack the Colonial Light. They will get peppered with shots on the way in. You guys are wavering because the Rangers have done some damage to you, but it won't be significant. It's just push up the left flank. And then you guys push up to the top of the hill. Attack the Hessian line because you've got infantry coming up behind you and you guys seem to actually be slower when charging compared to just attacking just walking normally the mounted tribal auxiliary are not going to be knocking around for very long because they've now got a whole bunch of troops they're going to be engaging them yep, there they go pivot this infantry to here so, bearing in mind it's now our pikes holding the line when really they should be being supported a bit more than that so just keep my blank advancing you guys take the high ground Hessian Grenadiers actually, maybe you can both go up there secure the high ground you guys don't actually engage per se Let's get some of these troops in to fill in the gaps. Get my pikes to attack the Hessian line. Hey, there they are. Let's get a colonial militia unit to engage the demi cannons. Got two units of militia ganging up on the native warrior auxiliary. 
When these guys secure the hill, they should clear out the native musketmen. That should be a great quick climb shot there. You guys are popping shots at my troops as they wander around. So you guys hunker down. You guys keep attacking the Hessian line. I mean, if those guys get into range... <laughs> ah, you're, they're lucky you're reloading. Yeah, so my militia are going to take some damage from these native musketmen auxiliary, but that's okay. Chief has got the 19th Regiment up here on the hill, ready to fire into their rear. Yeah, they are not going to be around for long. So you guys advanced far in on their flank. This colonial line charged the Hessian line. You guys attack the general's bodyguard. Push my pikes up through the gap. Aha! So, mount tribal auxiliary. Where's my field artillery engage them? Those guys are routed due to concentrated artillery fire. So they're going to follow them soon. Keep my pikes running up. Yeah, there goes the native auxiliary. You guys both fight the tribal auxiliary. To be honest, all of you fight the tribal auxiliary. You men can push around to attack the Hessian line in the rear. The unit of Colonial Line is probably going to engage the 19th Regiment with volley fire. Unsuccessfully, it would appear. My pikes can deal with the Colonial Line in quick succession. My, gen my cavalry can advance try take out the enemy general. There we go, it's another unit. Get in there to charge the Hessian line. It's going to be a bit bloody than I'd like, but I do have a, a force whose core component is um, cavalry. So I wouldn't... I'm not, no, no, not cavalry. Um, militia. So let's cease fire all my artillery. Colonial Dragoons, engage the General's Bodyguard, the Northumberland Fusiliers. Your charge isn't good. You've got some good... Oh yeah, I didn't have a look at, didn't actually look at them. So they look like Grenadiers, but you can see all these yellowy brown, mustard brown facings. There, for them. More yellowy brown. On the American, um, so the Hessian Grenadiers, I mean, they look pretty, pretty splendid, I think. Shame about the limited numbers. Native American Mercenaries also look pretty splendid. So now it's everyone against this last unit of Hessian line. General's been killed, which is always a nice result. Charge my pikes on into the enemy combat there. You guys could chase down and attack the Hessian line because they're actually quite vulnerable there. In this particular case, because they are surrounded by my troops who may yeah you this militia unit's tired not very tired and they might actually successfully chase them down not they'll make too much of a difference but every little helps Oh, I was going to say, that means there's a hidden unit somewhere. And there is, it's just <laughs> native musketman auxiliary advancing into a position of weakness. So we are going to continue, but it's not going to... I mean, my general's not, is, is in a pretty bad place to do a lot of damage, so it's just going to be down to my colonial dragoons to mop up some of these enemy troops. go you can try go for the 18 no they're gonna everyone's gonna route no one's gonna be 
killed today. Yeah, there's a unit all the way over there that's definitely going to escape. And my general's not going to get to the irregulars here. Hmm. Still, I'll take it. It's a large force of the 13 colonies troops that's been repelled. Well, not repelled. They've nothing to repel. They retreated a okay direction. So you men replenish. Can the troops at Charleston, without artillery, reach them? They can. So I'm going to auto that because only 500 of them left. So obviously because the artillery have fewer movement points, what that means is that's an army that's been cleaned out. And I can probably... I can. Yeah, so my artillery wouldn't didn't have the... Uh, the movement points to actually reach the enemy so that's why i wouldn't have reached them if i didn't as long if i didn't uh, get rid of my artillery trail so let's do some rebuilding so timothy sutton advanced to put williamburg williamsburg under siege roland nordell i mean you could actually put them under siege now but i might advance you up get eyes on annapolis because next turn, they'll be sieged. Napis will be sieged the turn afterwards. We've got Alexander Croucher here, who, depending on where this guy goes, could route, he could run somewhere frustrating. Then we've obviously got Elias Haskett to the north. But first, let's take Alexander Croucher and his force, including some Queen's Rangers, to hit Roland Benton. A couple of Marines here. So... First blow will strike hard at them. Um, once we've dominated the Americas, these armies might actually be ready to form the core of a, a British East India Company that will be set up. Because I'm, I'm pretty content with my economy and production capability in mainland Europe. We don't need these American forces to join them. So my guns engage on the hill. So... Yeah, because you didn't really give them a proper look in the last battle. This is what the 5th Northumberland Fusiliers look like, and I think they look pretty good. The face details is alright. It's a surprising amount of detail on their um, emblem here. But yeah, they look pretty good. And these are the Queen's Rangers, so we got these in uh, from having a military building in Louisiana. And this is in Empire Total War if you get the um, Elite Units of the Americas DLC. Which you should definitely get, just because all of the unit packs, I mean, who doesn't like more units, right? That's my, it's always been my stance on it. Even if it's not um, an army I play, it's still, I would rather, you know, face them if nothing else. Like at least a bit of unit variety in the enemy, you know, the enemies you see on the battlefield is nice. But we're forming into a, an almighty line. We're going to advance and hopefully try and destroy them. So I'm actually going to get my cavalry, my general out on the flanks. Limited amount of artillery. But that means that we can have more of a decisive advantage as far as infantry is concerned. So let's push that cavalry up quick because that's going to be a, a challenge to our power there. So these flanks are going to be curved in. So they're colonial. They're both colonial lights, but this this back my um this flank's gonna have the uh, actually you guys might drop into square. You guys are gonna be fire well off. There we go. My my general's bodyguard's gonna be involved. So what I wanted for these guys was to actually advance a bit further up, because then the terrain is a bit kinder to their volley fire so now this flank over on the left assuming everyone else is going to be fine you guys storm up this flank my cavalry join them the center of my line drop into squares well, you don't have to drop so Ordinarily, we'd be level pegging because our cavalry is identical to their cavalry. The only difference is we've thrown our general's bodyguard into the mix. Which should make all the difference. Although, 
Okay, I'm a bit concerned about these guys, because they've not lost many men, so they're, they're definitely going to come back. He goes back into formation, get you guys to sneak up past this combat here. Some colonial militia that looks like they might try and cause us some issues. So this cavalry, again, because they've dropped all these squares, we can't really take them out through rear strikes in the way that we'd want. I think he goes fire a will. Do some damage to the marines. Yeah, they're losing quite significantly here. Yeah, there's the uh, mounted tribal auxiliary you guys about face. You guys about face and just engage them in the rear. It's going to cause a bit more of a morale upset than anything. Aha! Go, go, gadget cavalry. Now this is where you've been hiding, eh? So let's ignore that unit because they're firing for the rear. I've been waiting for them to get slightly closer to my guns to prevent them from having such a... So my guns can pivot without having to... Uh... Okay, good. They've been... They're broken, so... Push these guys up to help support this big brawl over on this flank. Colonial militia and the marines are still here. Get my cavalry out of there. I see men get involved in the combat, because I mean light cavalry is never the best when they are being when they're when they're in a <laughs> They're forced to fight a, a drawn-out action. It's this colonial line unit. Run over here and run over here. You guys charge the native musketman auxiliary. You guys are way too close, but that just means your volley, when it goes off, is going to be pretty devastating. You men smash the marines. Lest you be killed, their fire, Ooh, if they fired, could have been quite devastating. Uh, American mercenaries have routed these mercenaries. Oh, interesting, we're getting a good measure on what these guys can and can't do. General's bodyguards involved in the combat here now, so my cavalry might actually be in for a bit of a bad time. But that's why I've got bucket loads of infantry. I need to be really careful about the direction these guys are routing. My general can chase down the marines, fair enough. Aha, there's bow fire coming in here as well at the same time. That will go a long way to explaining why they are doing so well on a morale pers from a morale perspective. Yeah, just let some of like, these other troops carry on chasing down the enemy. So obviously you guys fire at will. Charge you guys in to fight the general's bodyguard as well. Try pull a unit of colonial dragoons out of there. So the wider position is untenable. Good. You guys can chase down the gunners. You shouldn't get caught on any spikes. Get 
take my general's bodyguard back here. Yeah, they're charging my general. Well, it looked like they were attempting to. Good. Uh, keep my that infantry there angled. Get you guys to tech the, the 10th regiment. You guys are clearing out the that regiment. You guys are clearing out the 4th. This action's still going on with the general's bodyguard. Let's position you guys actually slightly off the flank. These guys should be... Well, they are tearing the enemy infantry a new one, although some of these units are struggling to reach. So you men advance. Sorry, you guys, you're gonna be in reserve. Because every militiaman we kill off the field is a another unit that will disappear into the, the ether. Uh, where'd you go? There you are. Oh, both kill the 13th, they're all right there. There we go, Colonial Dragoons. So our cavalry are routing from that combat. The mercenaries will probably be enough. We've killed their general. Like I said, they are light cavalry. They got drawn into a slugfest action. It's unfortunate that we've lost a cavalry unit, but it could be better placed surrounding and destroying His Majesty's enemies. See, they are still actually holding. Both these mercenaries form line against that colonial militia. You guys avoid the combat. Don't go for the general's bodyguard. Although I bet they're now aggroed on us. Usually that's the the trend. The AI decides I'm having you, and he decides no, I'm just going to follow um, your cavalry around the map. It's like oh great. Chase down this unit of marines. They could well rout. Their numbers have, have fallen significantly. There you go. Every marine you kill is another one we don't have to face later on if they try and recover. Again, I'm charging my rangers up way too close. But I'm not really used to having true skirmishes. Look at these. These little chaps have got their first volleys off. Well, they're not as good in melee as regular troops, nor do they have the morale. So they are just inferior troops compared to regulars. There we go. Let's pivot you guys along. Could definitely throw more into the mix, but why worry? Yeah, there we go, they routed anyway. We are going to continue at two speed. So, let's just keep... Keep the cavalry busy. It's sad that you're actually fate charging it on a... A spread out unit. But still, any unit we kill is a... Is a very... Is a major benefit for us. Uh, they've routed, so abandon them. Or well, they will route, they're very close, so why worry about it? You guys are within spitting distance of killing this unit of marines. Although well, one is here. Well, he's now died. So it's just them. We may as well get to the point of grouping our cavalry together to try help definitely kill the ones we can reach. You guys can try chase down the 27th. 
but these guys may as well team up to knock out these last 48 militia, although that's not going to work. Ah, there's the edge of the map. Now, oh, the 27th are going to successfully rout as well. And it says it was close. It was certainly scrappy, I would agree to that, but close? Yeah. But there we go. We lost 1,000 men. They lost nearly 3,000. They've got 400 men remaining, and they're falling back to New York. You guys hold position and replenish. And then we've got Elias Haskett, who is going to walk over here. Doesn't matter. I wanted to go here and hit them to try and make sure they push south. Um, if it's a bridge battle, that would be pretty fun. But the main thing was trying to bring in was wanting to bring in this regiment, which has the Worcester Regiment. Two regiments of the well, two Worcester regiments um, recruited. But yeah, so we can fight these guys. This army's not been impacted, but the, I'll auto resolve them with troops from Boston. But let's go and attack in the north. And then we need... Well, we're doing quite well. Next turn, that'll be uh, Virginia and uh, New York. Yeah, yeah. No, not New York. New York's where we're fighting now. God, my... I'm sure. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember. No, it's not a bridge battle, so it doesn't really matter. So this is an old army that's been here for a long time. And there you go. The Fusilier Regiment von Losberger back in action. So let's get our Hessian line at the core of our offensive force. Let's put two regiments of infantry on one flank. 33rd foot and three more on the other flank. Actually, pikes help the centre because we've got cavalry to go wide and rangers to push up the right flank because the right's got two regiments plus the, the 33rd. The enemy are coming into the rear of the field, so there's no immediate rush. Just advance. We're going to make their... Make the lone militia unit route. And then we can just advance up the field. I mean, it's just a colonial militia unit. And the, to be honest, the reinforcing troops aren't exactly up to much either. Although it looks like they want to be... They want to play silly buggers. And it looks like... our oh, we are under fire from... Colonial Artillery. So let's take this flank and instead... Trot them up like so. I mean, if they're falling back, that's fine. There's no rush to catch hold of them. Okay, the enemy cavalry is getting into position, so let's keep our pikes ready. So what's that? An initial charge from the 3rd Light Horse, General's Bodyguard, Mounted Tribal Auxiliary, and everyone else is hammering it to the front. I bet they're after the Rangers, so if I run them back, what happens then? Yeah, see? Yeah, they, 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 they really want the, the lights. Go on, you men drop into square. Is the one unit they're going to go for is the one that didn't form square? Makes sense. Yeah, that unit of colonial light, light cavalry did not last very well. There you go. Let's begin to close the gaps. There you go. My light cavalry chase down the general's bodyguard. 
you guys don't form square, form line. Mount tribal auxiliary are going down. My artillery can engage them. And my, th my range is running into this combat, but it shouldn't last too long. General's bodyguard looks very upset. There we go. Thir the 13 colonies commander has been dispatched. I mean, this unit of militia is. These units of militia are likely not enjoying the action they've just wandered into. If you could hurry up, that'd be great. Ah, it's not all expat infantry. Some of it's West. West Indian line. Com West Indian company infantry. And I mean, these guys are experienced, so it's not e so easy to uh, compare them. There we go. So they tried to charge us on the flank, but that didn't help. There we go, just keep advancing. So we spoke, we're creating a few gaps in our line. But none of them are exactly problems. Once these guys have beaten back the 16th regiment, we can really tighten, tidy up our position. There we go. Just like that. You men hit the 8th Regiment. Actually, no, don't. Let the... They don't have cavalry. So let's try and exploit that by waiting for some of these troops to rout. These units are going to advance. Not into technically the best position. You guys might actually be better served more like that. So Rogers Rangers. Getting good shots into the flank of the 8th Regiment. Who are going to be... Yeah, they are not doing so well. We've advanced up and we've uh, pushed, or we are pushing their reinforcement point. So if we can make the crum the center crumble again, that would be perfect. Let's just chew up these units. Good, our first catch of the day. You guys have a target-rich environment. <laughs> it's more about who do you want to shoot at? be useful to probably have had my cavalry there help dispatch those enemy bowmen. Because you might actually be up in for a bit of attrition. But then again, so is the 17th. You guys charge the 8th, because you can probably knock them down. You men advance, the rangers can cover you while you advance. Yeah, keep going after the 8th. You guys should... Okay, charge the 13th, because I want, to, want them to push through and go after this big block here. I mean, those guys may as well attack the 8th, because that's... Gotta have something to shoot at. There we go, you've... You've made the charge, I'll just go through. There we go, the enemy front is collapsing. As is tradition. You've definitely got to kill the 8th now. And you guys... Get over here. Good. That's the enemy front collapsing. So now... You guys advance into a close formation. 
kill that last militiaman and you guys get back and try hit the enemy infantry here looks like they've they've uh, risked it all on a gamble charging our line but you can see the uh, the issue that they are about to see get my general involved Go on, do as much damage to that regiment as you can. Okay, my general's not going to get involved. He's going to snake his way through. Because we've got some rich pickings. They might be trying to chase us down with their bowmen, but that won't save them. Those guys are all going to successfully route. Let's form a new front line here, because they're all so close. You guys hit the 8th, you guys hit the 9th. You guys are still running rings around the 7th. Some of them came back, naturally. So you men advance. You charge the gunners. No, you don't have to worry about actually killing them, just make them rout. Yes, yeah, so these bowmen have already done... They've already done what you want them to do. They've tied up my cavalry that could, that could have done more damage to them here. So that's why you guys attack the militia to hopefully get them off my cavalry's back. You can come back and hit the militia now. You are going to uh, hit the colonial militia. You're still attacking the 7th. they're gonna go that's, that's fine we could run them down with our infantry but it's usually not super worth doing i mean they're gonna route so just charge the 13th come on there's only six of them five of them you can get them before they get to the edge of the map Definitely can. Killed the enemy general at least. I presume he was in here. Uh, cavalry. You guys over here. Oh. The unit of enemy regiment came back. They've done a lot of damage to one of our line infantry units. guard mode off and let's get to be honest get all my cavalry that now currently doesn't have a job back here oh there's only one guy left stop my artillery from firing get him bash Good stuff. So that will have cleared out the uh, garrison at New York. They're going to... Ah, oh, that's an incredibly annoying direction to, for them to route. So if I bring... Okay, if you guys actually go chase down Rowan Betham. Elias, if you go and attack Albany, you'll bring in this unit. So if I auto that... They die. I, see, if I demanded a surrender, that unit would stay alive and it would have dismantled all my buildings here. So you guys... Okay, you could do with... Oh. Could do with artillery, but I don't think we've got an optimal location to recruit it that's not demi-cannons. But everything's done quite well, I think. 
And then over in Europe, obviously, we've got, well, a new front line is being constructed against the enemy. Well, not that the Ottomans are, are our enemies, but we're allies with the Prussians and we're not allies with the, the Ukrainians. Not the Ukrainians, the Ottomans. But, do, to be honest, I think we do. Or, well, no, no, it's because they're allied with Denmark, isn't it? Yeah, no, not yet. Not yet. In future, for sure, let's build another sharpshooter unit and then that's a, that's a complete army. Near as damn it. They don't have any howitzers. Our European front line's pretty solid. I think I'd probably like a few more ships in the med. And we've got our privateers recruited here. Yeah. So. You my battle fleet, Thomas Matthews. You are. So let's take... selection of privateers and sail them over to East Africa. The Ivory Coast has need of lots of privateers because that's where I've got actual battleships. Well, not battleships, but you know, proper ships doing that work. Although, did we clear out? Brazil's still MIA. The East Indies is MIA. Um, I think I get you guys over to West Africa continue to build ships like privateers because they are incredibly useful but i do want more ships in the med to potentially counteract counter um counter any potential um ottoman attacks because they do have a lot of ships in the med well they probably do in terms of tech nothing immediate to worry about i think we are oh no one thing we can do um, Albany, stop repairing. Let's knock it down. So for the same reason as Montreal. Montreal, with later building upgrades, can recruit some special units. So let's hit end turn. Again, my agents are on the move. More troops are marching to their rally points in England. Because obviously England's got a... Well, recruiting in Britain as a... We have a crazy unit roster there. So I really want to maximise the use of British-built armies rather than um, ones built on the front because while well, they're still good so, yeah so that that's exactly what I don't want the Ottomans to be able to do so easily when the war begins and the Marathas are going to come and try and steal our technology 13 colonies let's see what they how they respond yeah so one of their the single stack army decided is heading towards our other um there are other uh, units to regroup rather than be caught out in the open. We do have troops being recruited in Boston to join up with the army that I sent to chase them. So Greece, yeah. Greece has a surprisingly good navy. The Barbary States are still the Barbary States. Yes, yeah, so they raided the mines. I don't want to advance with this army. I want to block them in. We can give them some skirmishes and grenadiers. Albany has to hold ground. We can't advance on Philadelphia yet because I want the army to be uh, the army to be in better shape. We can recruit a twelve pounder now at Quebec. Get some things upgraded. Because yeah. Boston is is full as far as recruiting goes. We can recruit another two grenadiers, so I'd like to do that with another future army, and also get more um, of the another unit, or well, more of the sixteenth light dragoons. So down to the south, We're upgrading what we can. Ready, Timothy Sutton, who is replenishing, put battle. Williamsburg siege under siege. siege you can put. Annapolis under siege. And you're going to hold ground, because again, that stops these guys from driving out west. But we could um, attack three they're all their cities in one turn and wipe them out. Pretty short order. So they've blocked one of our ports, that's fine. 
Let's check some of our upgrades. We want to make sure we're upgrading our economy because again, we've we've got a lot of we've got a lot of enemies to fight, and we're only gonna we're gonna need to keep expanding our military and economic strength because we might end up having a crazy amount of units in the field and a crazy amount of ships as well. Yeah, lots of these industry buildings in, out west are going to be crazy useful. Grading lots of stuff in Quebec. So we've got the fort built on the front. I mean, obviously we've got a fairly good fleet, mixed fleet, and a standard army from the Ottomans there. So wherever they land, we should be able to hold. So the marines go there, the cavalry go there. I'm only doing this so I can manually know what I've got to play with. So this army is nearly done. You're waiting for a unit of Irish volunteers. This army is... So you've got six units. You're recruiting another six. That's 12. So then you guys want... Get some Highland Grenadiers. Get two Highland Grenadiers. Get a Highlander Warband. And let's get... you got one unit of Skirmishers. Let's pair up another unit of Connaught Rangers. Again, that will add to their recruitment time because they will have to come from Ireland. Although I'm sure they are still available. Yeah, there they are. Seven turns. Very well. So be it. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, so we've deployed all those. The privateers. Obviously two more of those. So let's actually keep those. I think it's all the privateers we can get. So let's start to spam out fifth rates as our trade ship of choice because we don't really have. I mean, we have access to war galleons, but fifth rates are good enough. So what we've got here, ah, Royal Sovereign is their own ship. Okay, so let's sail you to. Hmm. Sail you down to Cadiz. Because you, Edward Vernon, you uh, should be able to sail out to another trade zone. So, in terms of trade, Ivory's still the best, but we've not got any juicy targets in Ivory in terms of enemies. The Ottomans are there. Okay, but in terms of sugar or I've, in terms of sugar or spices, it's got to be spices. So let's go. You go sail for the West Indies. Royal Sovereign, make Port and Cadiz here, and then look for two heavy first rates, some more first rates, and a bunch of second rates. Then up here in Belfast, we have got a steam dry dock. We well, are already manuf mass, mass manufacturing fifth rates. I should probably do that here. Well, not just in Brist Bristol, but, you know. Let's dump. In this little cluster here, dump more, buy more fifth rates. Then Belfast, you can focus exclusively on third rate ships of the line. Well, as much as you can. Which is, this is going to massively impact our economy. Because we need, we need to keep generating all these fleets. Especially as we've got armies sat around not doing anything. Uh, you're still replenishing. You're still building up a reasonable garrison just in case these armies come after us. And to be honest, they're, they're actually really weak navies. So once this navy's 
built up, we can then sail them east to clear out the Barbary States, then go and attack Tripoli. That's them taken out. But I'm, I'm fairly confident the Ottomans are working against us as well. So when Kevin McDowell gets his next Irish volunteer unit, this is an army that's ready to rock and roll that may land... Well, I'm going to deploy them to the rear here. So they can follow up wherever the strike is, wherever the strike lands. I've just got two armies here that can hit Rome and Naples, but what I'd like... So, lists, agents, gentlemen... Okay, let's do... Okay, right. The time has come for you to join your colleagues in England, although I don't think I've actually got any spare ships. Funnily enough. Aha! Although, actually, you're... You should go over to Eastport. And then up here at Louisburg, we have a spare ship. Let's take the sloop Drake over to this dry dock. And then let's take our rake down here. Another mission Ships orders. on your Majesty's service. Well, let's take... To be honest, we can take the fifth rate. Brilliant, because he's got all he still has all its movement points, while at the same time keeping the port garrisoned. So brilliant. Get you over to Europe. Drake. I mean you've got I mean, you've got loads of movement points. Late game naval techs, they're pretty handy. Um Okay. But I think I should probably take like this guy that's in Crimea. Well, now you're still keeping an eye on my eastern flank. Majesty. Infiltrate Moldavia. Obviously, it's your cask. You know, I, I like having agents in territories because it means I can. I am keeping an eye on. Potential developments. He's got an agent in Williamsburg who won't be needed soon. I guess he's valuable. Rog. Well, yes, but I may. As, I think I'm just going to infiltrate. The smart move is probably not to do that, because it means they don't get caught. Um, but whatever. So Chikask, yes, Michigan Territory. Oh, okay, now we're on to Protestants. Now we're on to priests, rather, who... They're fine. They're converting away. Cool. Let's hit end turn and let's see how the AI responds to our attacks. And we have more men being recruited. Yeah, the Prussians sending more men to the east. I mean, there's no point scaling to try and defeat a mass of troops like that, because you won't win. And it would be um, cost prohibitive to attempt to try and keep up. So it's probably best to, if they want to expand a bit in the east, let them, because we're going to conquer the west. Okay, they're grouping all their strength near Philadelphia, and they're going to sally at Annapolis, so let's do this. That will hopefully um, pretty much annihilate their, their garrison and make follow-up attacks that much simpler. But I mean, we are depleted, so we can't rest on our laurels, and we've got minimal minimal artillery support, and we've got a large, a, a large amount of our force is militia. Unreliable at best. We're going to bring the fight to them. Eh, or are we? Is that a good idea? I don't think so, actually. Let's get all my militia out on the left flank. Let's make my right flank consist of all my other troops. They're not going to be deployed in the most efficient manner. Oh, I've actually got a couple more units. A good core of infantry. Then I've got pikes ready if they want to try and make a show of it. The howitzer is going to be working overtime. 
So advance my guns up to the hill. I might even advance my men up lightly. So can you guys fire anything? No, you can't. But they're going to be advancing on us anyway because they are attacking us. That's the thing to remember is that we are the defenders here. Group Unlimba. A couple of damaged units out on the flank. Most of the troops are actually in fairly good shape. Let's speed up time because our uh, and make our howitzer fire a round shot. Because while there's no adequate targets, we may as well let them engage whatever they like. Especially as oh, we've knocked up one of their guns. That's pretty useful. run the regiment of militia I doubt the light cavalry is going to want to pursue or to press its charge well I was going to say maybe it shouldn't do that but alright then Cause, I mean there aren't many of you and you're still light cavalry now bring my general over if you want to charge anyone Okay, how it's a uh, native bowman auxiliary would be a good target for you because they are problematic. That's a pretty good move by the AI, not to just go straight for the easy native bowman auxiliary attack. You're okay to stay over there. Push my pikes up, because that Colonial Light Cavalry's got their name on it. Yeah, you can charge them in the rear, that's fine. <laughs> they actually charge through my line. To the point where they can now get shot at from neighbouring units. So if we just touch them, there we go. Get back to prevent any problems there. There's lots of men pushing the right flank, more than I'd like. Hey, the cavalry charged my pikes. Have you never played Rome Total War? See, you even letting my pikey boys get back on their feet with their magic pikes. Point. So this flank might actually retreat or pull back to have a bit more of a coherent position. A militia and engaging, engaging in a battle against their militia and native bowmen. To be honest, you men, cease fire. Save your ammo. Quick line should do a real number on the native bowman auxiliary there. This cavalry unit should mop up all three of these units. Yeah. Could potentially kill them, but don't want to give them the satisfaction. Ooh. Shot over the heads of the enemy cavalry there.
Get a volley off into them, please. Then charge, join the charge. It's like they, the AI can't actually make up their mind where they want to attack. Do we have... Yeah, invisible bows. So bring my general out. I think you might actually... All you might have to do is just show them where they are. Then my... My infantry will do the rest. Yep. Yeah, so these artillerymen should be doing a pretty good job. Okay, you guys run away. Let my pikes, let my um, infantry chase them down. Go on, tag them the way they tag me. Good stuff. Now you guys can go a bit mental on the enemies that are left over. Get the howitzers to work on the enemies there. Ooh, good hit. There we go. Make the second regiment. Um, make the second regiment stay. Uh, oh, shattered. That's the word I'm looking for. Likely not possible for a long time because they've not lost that many men. Okay, you know what? Yeah, Demi cannons are still alive. I mean, they might not come back, but I need to make sure. I want to make sure. Because there's nothing worse than. Than when you're uh, when you're chasing down an enemy and they just decide, they just suddenly pop up later on, be like, oh, like 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 these guys, they're routing. Oh no, we're back. And you want to just go? No, bugger off. Very well. Start the machine rolling. Quick climb's doing a real number there. You guys attack the demi cannons. Militia have been routed. Colonial foot are being... Well, they're being attacked. Yeah, my cavalry's attacking their cavalry and they're doing quite a good job at leading me away with their funky behaviour. This is all militia. wide, get my, how get my howitzers to, op to open up on this flank because the right flank has absolutely crumbled. You chase down that colonial line. You guys spread out. There we go. So. Everyone is being killed. Obviously 13. Ah. Stupid light cavalry. Let's push up my dudes. Because they've only got that cavalry. And... This handful of units left. Annoyingly, they've been given given these guys an attack order, and they just don't want to follow it. There we go. <laughs> Artillery shells coming in.
There we go. They're being shot. Those guys are being shot. Hold on just a second, guys. Just a second. Radio. Sorry about that. Um, let's continue. I mean, not that there's much to uh, to continue with, because the enemy is going to rout at the next serious volley of fire. Um, don't you? I mean, I'm not probably not going to do too much chasing down, simply because it's not going to be worthwhile. We've got our Irish volunteer infantry that does know fire by rank. Even though they don't look it, they're all positioned like a conscript army. Think of them as like Russian line infantry. They look all like this, but they are they do fire fire by rank in some strange form. And this is an additional units mod unit. There we go, and the enemy has been pushed away. Oh, obviously there's a unit of line infantry all the way over here. Okay, let's speed time up. This is classic. Oh, this is classic AI. They're running away. They're right on the edge of the map. And then they go, no. They just go, no, we're not running away. It's part of the reason why having cavalry is so important, because it means you can actually make sure that units are uh, pursued off the map. I mean, they're not going to last. They're not going to stick around for very long. Yeah, there they go. A couple of volleys and that was that. Let's end the episode there. So, right now we've got... There we go. So we've lost 400 men. They've lost 16... Nearly 1,700. So that will have pretty much gutted their garrison. And here comes Dane Denmark. But yeah, so I think our our assault into the um, our assault into thirteen colonies territory has gone stupendously well. So let's do some economy investing. I mean, those ten thousand ten thousand cash docks are expensive upgrades, but you know, once you've upgraded to the top tier. Um, top tier buildings then at least you know that's that's it there's not a lot else there's nothing else you can really do so let's build a sloop here because this port's currently completely ungarrisoned let's go whole hog and upgrade it as well Ooh, some new towns so Algiers you can have a craft workshop Charlotte and the Carolinas can also get a craft workshop and upgrade these farms here so let's do some upgrades. Estates. Yeah, so the handy thing is once you get to top tier upgrades, you can just look through the building the building browser and go, no, I don't need to look there because they're top tier. Like all these are top tier. At least when it comes to um economy spending, you can just look through and go, yeah, they're all upgraded. Carolina's spending's been done. Upgrade Savoy. Top tier. Quebec's got some upgrades. Okay, so Montreal. For building a military governor's encampment, we should be able to get. Oh, don't tell me it's the Northumberland Fusiliers. No, oh, wait. Yeah, I've already got those. Well, if it's. I hope it's not just to them. Um. Yeah, so Quebec, send your artillery team down to Albany. You guys are standing ready. So you guys are going to auto-resolve the Maryland offensive because you've already fought that battle. We're going to replenish or repair the building and then upgrade the uh, the army. So you will be attacking Philadelphia because we'll have two armies that can attack the city. You don't necessarily... Oh, actually, you can have that gun. Then you can go over to Eugene and you can also join them. Let's upgrade the artillery artillery school at Boston. Let's build a sloop and upgrade the commercial port. So this will be the end of the 13 colonies. Well, the next episode will be, because we're going to take Timothy Sutton. 
and his army of nearly entirely replenished men are going to attack the city of Williamsburg. But looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for the destruction of the 13 colonies. Cheers everyone.